art or something like that, you get zero TRPs. But if you can get two people into the studio and you can get them to shout at each other, they will be TRPs. If the anchor, you get a tantric inside the studio and you get that tantric to shout at somebody, even more TRPs. If you get an anchor to shout at somebody, even more TRPs. I guess if the anchors are tantric, that's the best of it all, which may happen on those. But that's where the TRPs come from. And that's the reason why that. And by the way, for the television news channels, it's also cheaper. It's a much easier, cheaper thing to do. To get four people to come and shout at each other in the studio. Rather than spending expensive time and money sending camera people all around the world trying to trying to try to film stories. So the long and the short of it is that I wish I had good news to say television news is miraculously gonna turn around and it's gonna become wonderful and the source of information. I don't think it's gonna happen. But the good news is that I don't think it has to happen. Because as I said, that's in any case the technology of the past. So I quit television news in 2016. I mean, I left NDTV in 2016 and spent a reasonable amount of time trying to figure out what is going to replace it. There's a certain path which uh, I'm happy to talk to you about right now, uh, which is the path that I think the industry is going to move towards. It's a possible solution. But there are other solutions that will be out there. Hopefully, a few years from now, everything will be great. Uh, the, real, the real question that struck me um, when, I was, when I left television is, if the first is a given, television news is broken, sensationalism, and in video television, you have no choice, no personalization. You can't personalize your television news channel. <laughs> or physically doing that. You have to watch whatever garbage, uh, you have to watch whatever great content is being pushed out to you at that particular time. The real question for me was, why is digital video news not working? Because if you look at di digital news, text news, a lot of people get it very effectively and very efficiently on various devices, on mobiles, on websites, you get apps, you're able to get digital news, you're able to get news on digital formats without too much problem. You're able to get digital video on OTT without too much problem. There are examples I gave you, Amazon Prime, Netflix, everything works just fine, there's no problem. But put those three words together, digital video news, and it doesn't work. Nowhere is it really working. So I spent some time, I went and met the YouTube folks and others like that and said, it's a problem. And they say, well, we don't know, it just doesn't work. You know, we, we keep hoping that there'll be more news and other content on YouTube. It doesn't work. And then it came to us when we sat and did some, some thinking about it. The reason it doesn't work is because what you want to be informed, if you want news or information, you want 20, 30 pieces of information to feel, okay, I know what's happening in the world. Some headlines, some sports, some lifestyle, some you know, technology news, some business news, some what's happening to them. You want 20, 30 pieces of information. How do you get that on digital formats? Now, the answer from YouTube and many of the other people was, oh, people will come and they will open YouTube and they will type the story they want and we'll show them the story. Now, to my mind, that is a profoundly unsatisfactory answer. Because who's going to do it? Like, who's going to really sit? You may have heard of the story. You just heard me saying, unfortunately, Cyrus Mysteries has passed away. Now, story, you may Google it, you may search it, and that story may come up. But you're not going to do that 30 times in a day, not for video news. So video news, therefore, does not have an answer. Video news today is being delivered to all of you through social media. People send you WhatsApps, people send you Facebook videos. And that is where you think is informing you, but not really. Because a lot of that is fake news, a lot of that is opinionated news. Even if it's not fake, most of the news that is coming through is colored with somebody's opinion. It's a review. It's not the news. So it's not the answer. So the next. Uh, so yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Why, why linear television fundamentally is happening, which then led us to another. I'm going to sort of go upwards a little bit from what I'm saying about the music industry. Where? Where we at Heritage felt that the answer is going to come from is from the music industry. And I still believe the answer in video news and information will come from the music industry. And that's because if you really think about it, 
it's not that dissimilar. Music is little little clips, two minutes, three minutes. Right? That's the way music is. Um, again, you have the same issues. How am I going to hear? I, want to, I don't want to hear it for just two, three minutes. I want to keep hearing it for a while. In music, you usually traditionally have radio. And that's like television news. TV news is like radio. You switch on a channel, you can listen to it. If you don't like what you're listening to, it's, pers it's not personalized. You're listening to something that someone is giving you. If you don't like it, you have to switch the channel. So television news is like radio. Today, digital video news and information is like cassettes and CDs. You can find the song you want. You can find the news story that you want. But frankly, it's a pain to do that. It's a real effort. You're going to go looking for it. Form factor is not there. Who's going to really be getting cassettes and CDs and fast forwarding and finding the right thing? So neither of them works. But in music, the problem has been solved, right? Because what you do is, everyone must be listening to Apple Music or Spotify or various things like that. Well, essentially, two things are happening. You are getting, either you are listening to a curated playlist that some person has put together. 70s music, Bhangra, rap, something like that. So it's somebody has put together a playlist of music that fits what you are looking like listening to at that point. Or an AI algorithm is saying, you know, this is the sort of music you like, we're going to make you hear more like that. Playing music for you, release radar. Right? That's the concepts like that. So that at a core is what we have put together. If you were to ever look at what we spent two to three years building, is a very simple system where if you get the Energy app, you click on it, uh, and you open it, then there will be an AI playlist that will give you news, which it thinks, which is to keep you informed. 20, 30 stories selected for you. And those stories are selected partly stories that you should see, that we think are important for you to see to be informed, and some are based on preferences. Now there's a very big debate about this, which I'm going to come back to, because just as, as bad as television news is, algorithms and AI running AMAC could be even worse, even worse. So therefore, just pause that thought for a minute and I'm going to come back to it, why that algorithm has to be very carefully treated. So we've got AI which is selecting news for you, and below that are curated plays. You can move forward. Technology, fine, here. You want lifestyle, here. Art, here. You want international headlines, here. International headlines. You want sports headlines, here. Sports headlines. So you use playlists to deliver video news to people. So that's, I think, an important direction in which the entire industry is going. The other important industry, uh, direction which I think the entire industry is going to improve, and this is something which I really want to leave, you know, maybe get a debate started on this, is this entire question of a pipeline versus a platform. And just bear with me while I take you through this, because in my opinion, I could be completely wrong. I think in the next four to five years, in the media industry, you are going to see an overturning of something that has existed for 100 years, 150 years. And that is, there's this, there, all businesses traditionally have run as pipelines, and the media business is no different. By pipeline, I mean, you have a media company that says, I'm a big shop, I'm Times of India, I'm Arjdat, I'm NDTV, I'm Republic, I'm whoever I am. I'm the big shop, I'm a big media company, and I control my user. I have a pipeline to my user. To experience my content, the user has to come to me, read my newspaper, watch my television news channel, download my app, come to my website, listen to my radio. You've got to come to me. I have a pipeline to my user. And the power of a media company is driven by how fat that pipeline is. Why is that fight for TRPs? If I have lots of TRPs, I have a fight fight to my user. So you want to get my users, you want to come to me, give me ads. Why is it that I'm bothered about subscribers? It means I have a fat pipe to my users. So you want to come to me, right? Same with two with you name it. Everything has been based on the pipeline that you have to be using. But if you look around you, 
that's not the way most other industries are behaving or functioning anymore. Let's take some examples. Um, the hotel business. We used to have a pipeline. I have so many hotel rooms, right? That was the pipeline that you had to your consumer. I am the Taj Group. I have so many hotel rooms. I am Marriott. I have so many hotel rooms. How many hotel rooms does Airbnb own? The answer is zero. How many restaurants does Zomato own? Zero. How many cars does Uber own? Zero. How many stores, how many physical stores does Amazon own? Well, few, but not that many. In every industry around the world, platforms are coming and are smashing pipelines. There are virtually no industry that I can think of where a pipeline business is able to compete with platforms on a sustainable basis. And the reason for that is, all it takes for a good platform to do is to figure out how do we get the protocols, how do we get the network, how do we enable the sharing of information, how do we enable people to build on what we have built and use network effects. So the more people you have, the network becomes stronger and it's very tough for any one big company to come into it. So really the most radical thing that I think we have been speaking about for the last two to three years and frankly, most places in the last two to three years where I've been seeing this sort of stuff, the reaction, at least before the pandemic, I mean, I launched it in 2017, 2018, the reaction till the pandemic came from most people when I used to say exactly the same sort of a thing was to say, man's gone mad. Like, this is completely crazy, this is insane, this is just stupidity, this is never going to happen. Not in the media business. But somehow, interesting, post the pandemic, now, no one is saying we are crazy. Now, people are saying, ah, I have time to take a time, Lavika, maybe two, three years, maybe this. But they're willing to think about it, they're willing to experience it. Because they are seeing how in the pandemic suddenly you can go from physical to digital overnight. How suddenly entire industries can be wiped up and new industries can come up. And all of it can happen overnight. So, a radical prospect like this is not, I think, as crazy as it sounds. I don't know how long it will take. It could take two years, it could take four years, it could take seven years. But the day will come when a platform and a media business will replace the traditional way which media has done. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing in time. How does that, how does that fundamentally work? How do you use um, AI and platform theory to do this? I mean, really, if you visualize the way platforms work, it's like this. You are really the person sitting in the middle, writing the code, writing the protocols, figuring out how things can come in, how is information being distilled, how is information being put into playlists and pushed out. That's your main goal, the, the user experience for that. Content, yeah, the content can come into the energy, but we're very happy to take content from anybody who's a partner with us. And we can sign up with, con with partners, and we can say, come on, put your con put the content in. So, you can cut art. Why not? It's an art content, it's any content coming in. So you can take content from virtually any day who's a partner, plug them into this and say, fine, no, let's have your content. We need influencers to add their content. We need anybody who want to go inside. And the important part about the platform, this is really the crazy part of it. Because everyone will look at you, whether it's a venture capitalist or an advertiser or a brand, will look at you and say, but how many downloads do you have? How many users do you have? And it takes us a lot to say, assume we have zero. Why is that a problem? So assume you have zero. Why is it a problem? Because as long as people are experiencing and watching it, whether they're watching it on social media, whether they're seeing it on Telegram, whether they're seeing it on the partner apps, it should not matter. Philosophically, it should not matter. And that's that's a place where you know part of this. I mean, luckily this concept of it's not, it's not actually zero. It's actually, if you do distributed distribution, you'll be astonished at how fast it will happen. Why? Because we are plugged into things like clouds. We are plugged into things like Airtel Thanks. If you have, if you guys use Airtel, you know, then Airtel Thanks will have our videos running away. So that's the sort that's per, per month, by the way. And the impression per month is the sort of people who are seen, who are being exposed to that content, which is why distributed distribution essentially. 
but and uh, say you all this. But the real, the real excitement in this, and then I promise to shut up and throw it open to questions. The real excitement, I think, from my point of view and our point of view is within a year, actually within three months of once the technology is ready and happy to go private and everybody wants, we can enable anybody to create their own video news channel. Anybody. Now, there's certain elements of danger in that, that you know, you want what everyone's going to run on having their own video news channel, how does it work? It's not quite as wild as, as it is. We are starting this off with just select partners. Where we are, what we do is with Editor G, we can do create your own users. All hundred, we do 150 video stories a day. All those stories are available, and you can assemble them into whatever you want, and you can record your opinion. Your opinion. So this is your, you can become an anchor person. You can become, you can add your own anchor links. You can add your own opinion to stories. And then, you don't need to have Editor G or anybody else. You can then directly share it on your Twitter, on your email, or Instagram, embed it in your website or whatever. So this is again a very nascent idea. But this is where Web 3.0 or, you know, Web 3.0, which is a buzzword these days, is not, it's largely a scam right now with people associated with cryptocurrency. But there are aspects of peer-to-peer -peer networks which are not a scam. And the ability for people to, for example, supposing you had a group, call it the Muslim of Goa group, people whom you know, and they trust you to have information. What are we in the business of doing? Creating those little video stories that I mentioned. Let's say we do 150 of them. For us, we are in the business of creating Lego blocks. So each of those 150 is uh, pieces of information. Now we can use AI to assemble them into a newscast for you, but why do you need us to assemble it? There are 150 stories. That's what Dr. Kevin, he knows what everybody wants, right? Or what people will like. You assemble those building blocks into a newscast that you think people will like in Goa. Right? Assemble it. So you say, here are pieces of information which are relevant. Each of those information is not opinionated, so you can assemble it if you want to. Add your anchor links, add your opinion, and share. That, I think, is the way things will start, will, will start to move. Um, why those building blocks are important is because today, as I started by saying, all of information is fundamentally coming to you from sources that are have their opinion laid in. So it's not flat pieces of information. And there's a danger in that. What we are trying to do is saying this is what has happened. Now, is it good or is it bad? That decision we leave to you. Or if you're sharing it to your building the playlist, we'll allow the people who's doing that to do it. But the basic information is just flat, this is what has happened. We allow people to make up, make up their own things. That is one major philosophical uh, decision that we have taken, that the news stories themselves should be flat. The other very major important philosophical thing that I'm going to leave everyone here with is what I started by saying, should you show people news content that they have said they would like to see, their preferences in other words. And I know Seema and I have debated this or argued this the time we were setting up editor there is a particular view, and both there's no nothing right or wrong with anything. One is to say, if people have set certain preferences, show them the news that they have said they would like to see. So if they've said we don't want to see politics, why show them politics? If they don't want to see international, don't show them international. And that's a there's nothing wrong with that argument, that's absolutely a correct argument to take. Um, the line that we have taken has been slightly different, which is to say, we are in the business of informing people. So even if a person has said, I'm not interested in business, if it's a really big business story, you should show it to that person. Because if you're the, the medium by which people are being informed, you don't want them to be locked up into ideological echo chambers. But that's the danger. All of this is an exciting world. Yes, AI is going to play a powerful role in this, and platform theory will come and not to stop it happening. But AI 
at the end of the day is just a tool. And that tool can run as a control. If you've seen the social dilemma that that series of intuition see is true. Facebook, Instagram, all of these algorithms keep showing you stuff which is designed to drive your clicks, which is designed by, okay, I will show this to this person and that person will click upon it, right? What that means is, if you have right-wing views, you will be shown right-wing stories. You keep on being shown right-wing stories. You will never like be shown a left-wing story. If you're interested in X, right, you will be, you will keep on getting stories about X to such an extent that you almost forget the rest of the world exists. And that's the reason why, fundamentally, according to me, the world has become such a divided place. Why people are not being able to agree with each other. It's not just in India. In India, of course, there are divisions. But those divisions aren't only in India. Those divisions are everywhere in the world. Look at what's happening in the US. I mean, in the US, two years later, you can't get two people to agree on whether there was an election and whether the election was a fair election and somebody win the election. But who won the election? No one can agree on that. Right? So the most basic of things people can't agree on. And why is it? It's not, it's not some miracle that is happening. It's, it's happening because people on this side of the divide are being shown stories that feed their belief. People on this side of the divide are being fed stories that feed their belief. And you can't agree. Nobody can agree on what reality is. And that is going to get worse and worse and worse the more you leave things just to algorithms. So yes, we are using AI and we are using algorithms to try and, re to try and reshape the landscape. But I think we're very cognizant of what the problem is. It was very easy for us to have built an algorithm right at the beginning, which would have only shown people what our data is saying they will click on. And I can tell you our traffic would have been a hundred times of what it is right now. Not double, not ten times, a hundred times. We chose not to do it. Having built an algorithm, we broke it and we came up with some new hybrid system where human Human editorial processes will work together with what the AI is telling us we should. And I, I, I still think that that is going to be a problem. Okay, that's it, I'm done. Now, three more questions. <laughs>